Hey there, Snackers. My name is Matt DiNapoli, and I'm a developer advocate with the Cisco DevNet program, and I focus on Cisco Meraki. And my name is Kareem Iskander, and I am a developer advocate with Cisco DevNet focused on Cisco DNA Center. Welcome to episode two of DevNet Snack Minutes. Snack Minute is your weekly 10-minute all things DevNet giving you a quick, fun way to learn about Cisco APIs, coding, and just some cool stuff you want to know. Um, in this episode, Matt is going to talk to us about Meraki and the latest Meraki documentation that was released. Yes, I am, and I'm really excited about it. Kareem, I have a I'm going to start this off with a question. Have you used the Meraki APIs in the past? I have, and I love the Meraki APIs. They're pretty good, right? Yeah, Meraki just recently uh, released their new version of their API, and it's actually the first time they've ever updated the, AP, the, the whole API set. And so I really wanted to get this out in our snack minutes because I'm just, it's the thing I've been talking about for actually a, a month now. So, um, you know, getting it out there and getting people working on it is really what I'm excited about. And I wanted to show you some of the new things that we're able to do with this API and some of the new documentation that we're going to be working with. And so uh, we're gonna head to developer.cisco.com slash Meraki. Uh, that is Meraki's developer hub. And there we will be able to get access to our documentation, the stuff we're gonna look at today, uh, learning labs, uh, access to our sandbox environments, uh, use cases that we can leverage against Meraki, all the fun stuff for developers and people who just want to uh, extend the Meraki universe. Um, so what we're going to be focusing on is the version one of the, the dashboard API. There's a bunch of other integrations into Meraki, but the one that we're going to be focusing on today is that dashboard API. And if you have other interests in finding out about more of those integrations, there are a number of uh, blog posts and uh, recordings that cover that stuff. But we're going to just focus on this today. Now, the first thing you're going to notice is that up in the upper left-hand corner here, uh, it says V1. Now, the historical version of that is V0, and that's that was the Meraki API that we had in place uh, from actually day one of, of Meraki's API. And they just kept adding endpoint, endpoint, and endpoint. And the documentation kind of grew and grew and grew. And if we actually look at the API, just a long list of things in alphabetical order. Um, and some of it's easy to find and some of it's hard to find depending on what the endpoint is named. And so one of the big things that they did in going from V0 to V1 was they actually changed how the APIs are grouped together. And that actually ties into how the APIs, the endpoint URLs are built as well. And so if we go to the V1 documentation, we actually see now that the APIs are broken up based on the the thing that the API influences. And usually when we talk about Meraki APIs, uh, we start at the organization level. So uh, from from version zero to version one, did they was is there a, a, a new features that are added? That's one thing that I'm just wondering as you're going through this. And two, it, are you are we still having the same level of where I need to go in to first get my organization and then go down and get my network information and then get my device information from that level, or has that been broken out? Uh, two excellent questions. Um, so the first thing that you're gonna that you're gonna see from the V1 APIs is just more of them. <laughs> um, they added about 150 endpoints to uh, the original set that was in V0. So there's more feature parity now between the API and the dashboard itself. So things that you haven't been previously able to do, in the API, now you can. So that's been a, a huge improvement there. Um, but as far as the hierarchy is concerned, you still have to start at the organization level, uh, then move down to the networks, then down to the devices as you're working through whatever things you need to do in the API. So uh, most of the time and a lot of the activities you're gonna work through are going to start at that organization level and then move down to the networks. And you're gonna do a bunch of configuration or information gathering at the network level. Does that answer your question? Yeah, that's perfect, and it makes makes a lot of sense, actually. Okay, yeah, and then once we get down to the devices, then that's when things get split up into products, and that's what we see on the left-hand side here. The appliances hit the uh, MX security appliances. We have our MV cameras that are covered under the camera APIs. The MGs are the new cellular gateways. 
Uh, and then the classic devices like the MS switches and the MR access points are covered in there. And then some of the actual software platforms are covered in here under um, Systems Manager or SM. And then uh, Analytics and Insight gives us a lot of reporting across all of our uh, devices, networks, and organizations that we can then tie into through APIs and build out all of these cool dashboards that we can push out to different levels of, of interest. So that's the really cool part about how the, the API itself is broken up and then how the documentation is built towards that API. But per everything, we always have to start at the organization level. And since um, a lot of people are, are not indoctrinated to the Meraki way, I, I would really like to show you how we kind of walk through the documentation and then leverage that to create our code. This is pretty cool. Just having having that experience from a developer perspective, where I can see my documentation, and I know I know we've seen something similar like this with if you've played with the WebEx Teams APIs, but having it in Meraki <laughs> and the way it's documented is just is just awesome. Um, it makes our lives easier, much easier when we're writing code. Yeah, I appreciate that comment because. Um, you know, we worked hard on this, getting this documentation out. I, I didn't do a lot of the heavy lifting, but the API architecture team did a really great job on this. So uh, that's why I'm so excited to show it to you, actually. Uh, and we can run the API calls in the documentation, and that's the really cool part. So yeah. our API key uh, is, is set up in our configuration. And this one that you're seeing here is actually tied into our DevNet sandbox environment. It's our always on Meraki sandbox. And what that allows people to do is if they don't have access to their own Meraki organizations or networks, they can make API calls to kind of kick the tires and get comfortable with what the API is capable of and how they interact with it. And so our API key here is going to tie us into that sandbox. Hey, Matt, for the sandbox, is there anything that I need to do in order to get access to this? Or how do I get into that sandbox? So this sandbox is always on, so you'd actually don't need any credentials other than that API key to make it work. But if you were to hit uh, any of our other sandboxes, we have reservable ones as well for Meraki and a bunch of other technologies. Uh, you'd head, head to devnetsandbox.cisco.com, and then you'd log in with your uh, DevNet credentials, and that can be a, a number of different ways. Pretty straightforward to get access to those. And this is all free, right? Like, I just need a DevNet account, and I can have access to the sandbox just like that, right? Uh, yeah, of course. So getting back into the docs here, we have our configuration uh, that's set up. All of these other things are, are baseline, and you don't have to worry about setting them up right away. You'll become more comfortable with those APIs and the variables that you'd use for them as, as you're walking through this. So we can actually just hit run on this, and it should give me a list of organizations that that API key has access to. Everything's 200 OK. I get a bunch of information back here. And I want to tie into the DevNet Sandbox. So I'm going to grab that. I'm going to copy it. And then we're going to head up to our um, configuration. And this is where I can set up some, some of my variables. So the one that I actually copy is, it is already set up here by default, 549236. And that is my organization ID. And now I can actually drive down into the networks that I want to uh, take a look at for that organization. So I go to get organization networks. This again is at the same level of the organization ID, but this is my favorite part, Kareem. You're gonna love this. I can set it up such that it ties into the variables that I have set up in my configuration. So able to do this in the documentation, you might, for, you know, for those of you out there, you might have seen this similar experience in working with Postman. Um, we now have added it to the documentation to kind of save you guys a step in working with the APIs. So we have our organization ID in there. It fills in in the actual URL that's being displayed. And then if I run that, it should give me my list of networks. And so then I have the IDs to then grab the, let's get the DevNet Sandbox Always On ID, and we'll copy that. And then we'll just do one more API call, and then I'll show you one more cool thing. So we'll head down to our uh, networks. So we're in organizations. Let's head to networks. And we're going to get a network ID. Oh, I forgot to set it up in my configuration. So we would paste that in here. It's already set up for us because that's our default example. And then I can just pop in my network ID here. And it'll fill it in for me. And it'll persist from API call to API call. And so that'll give me information about my networks. 
or if I wanted to actually get my list of devices in my network, actually, that's the, the third level I want to get into. Um, we can either set our network ID in there, or we can call out our variable like we did before, hit run, and then that should give us our list of devices that are part of that network. Now, the last thing, now the coup de gras is we want to turn all of this into code, right? So if we head over to the template portion, we have the Meraki Python library code for us, the base code to make that work. The curl commands, if we wanted to, to copy and paste that. If we're not comfortable with working with SDKs and we want to do Python requests, we can do that there. And then finally, uh, for those of you that like to live in the JavaScript world, uh, you can hit up the Node.js code as well. You, what you've done is not only that I was able to go in and look at the documentation and understand the endpoints in a really nice and clean way, I was able to test the endpoints within the documentation itself and get my code written for me where I don't actually have, I can just take that to my ID and start building my application. This is exactly. this is like the gift that keeps on giving, basically. And that's all I have for this week, Kareem. Thanks, Matt. For everything that Matt has talked about here, head over to developer.cisco.com slash Meraki and join us next week where we talk about DevNet certification. With that, um, I hope you enjoyed this yummy snack, Snackers. Thank you for joining us.